And of course, we have to understand this very well because we have to go with the rhythm of life. And without going with the rhythm of life, it can cause all kinds of havoc, especially diabetes. So there are many studies done that people work at nighttime, where are supposed to be sleeping, their rate of diabetes almost double. So if there's this, uh, uh, we'll talk about the rest of the uh, six holistic treatments. The fourth one will be about circadian rhythm. Now this requires a whole lecture, but let me just summarize what that means. The, everything that we see and everything in life has cycles. And most importantly, we call them circadian rhythm because this rhythm is on 24 hour rhythm. And there's a monthly 28 to 31 day rhythm. There is a yearly 365 day rhythm. And even within the uh, 24 hours, every 90 to 120 minutes, there's a cycle within the cycle as well. And of course, we have to understand this very well because we have to go with the rhythm of life. And without going with the rhythm of life, it can cause all kinds of havoc, especially diabetes. So there are many studies done that people work at nighttime, where they're supposed to be sleeping, their rate of diabetes almost double. So we know that it decreases your, uh, your strength and, and your energy level, which causes uh, not being able to handle the sugar very well, which is my theory anyways. So here's a cycle of your life, uh, 6 p.m. when you get home, uh, deeply sleep at night, and then waking up in the morning and having more energy throughout the day, it has to have this cycle perfectly. Your diabetes cannot go up and down too high, but in circadian rhythm, I would my goal is to get you to have the deepest sleep at night, so way deep, and highest energy during the day. And by the way, when you have the deepest sleep at night, you're gonna have the most energy the next day. So our goal is to have you slow down into the deepest sleep, and then get you the best sleep, and then rev up in the morning to have the best day, have, having most energy throughout the day. And that's the goal of circadian rhythm. And when that happens, we talk about the sleep, how to do it so that you get the deepest sleep. And then how do you de-stress throughout the day so that you're gonna have the best amount of the curve that needs to go up. Because what goes down must come up. So let's talk about sleep. What are the benefits of sleep? We all know this. It increases or improves your brain function. If you're not sleeping well, it's like you're sleepwalking or during the day, you're gonna feel like you're drunk. So this is very important for your brain. Growth hormone, increase your growth hormone, which literally recovers everything from all the stress and problems. So growth hormone increase is very important and also reduces stress. Insomnia is so prevalent, about 50 to 70%, I like to say more than even 70%. As you get older, you get less and less sleep. We should be able to sleep more because you have less to do, but you're not tired. Let me repeat that. A lot of older folks, you don't exercise enough. You don't, you don't do all the, all the heavy lifting. Oh, you're too old, don't lift it. Don't do this, don't do that, right? People tell you, you know, all, all to slow down and do less. Guess what? Because of that, you're weaker and you're not tired enough at nighttime to sleep. So insomnia is very prevalent. And then what causes the sleep issue? Stress, obviously anxiety, pain, caffeine, drinking caffeine, I like, I like coffee too. So if you, coffee um, uh, lasts about eight hours. So for me, if I drink coffee after three, I cannot sleep too well. So I have to make sure if I have to drink it in the morning or by lunchtime, I'm done with the coffee. If, if I drink too late, I know some of you are not affected by it though, but caffeine is a big issue. Alcohol is a problem. No activities, we talked about it already. You're not you're not doing enough. You're not tired enough to sleep. Let me tell you, if you're out there doing a lot of stuff, exercising, you're running, all kinds of things, guess what? You're gone at night. You don't even know where you are. That's how tired you should be every day. Why? Remember that cycle? You have to do so much during the day so that you can go boom, down into the deep sleep as well. How do you get better sleep though? We're gonna talk about different rituals that I do on my next four videos, but I'm gonna give you a, a summary of it. Evening slow down ritual. Remember the slow down, you have to slow down into the deep sleep. It's like going on a freeway. You cannot, you're going 80 miles an hour, you cannot stop right away and that's gonna cause a problem, right? You gotta slow down to halt to get off the freeway, right? And same thing happening with a better sleep. You cannot just say, oh, I'm gonna sleep right now. I was exercising, I was drinking, eating a lot, I was watching TV, especially the scary movies. 
Uh, you got all that and then go, oh, I'm going to calm down and sleep. It doesn't work that way. You have to slow down. You have to do things. Exercise and eating, you have to stop four hours, four hours before you go to sleep. Prep the next day. You need to be prepared so you're more relaxed about what's coming tomorrow. And then gratitude and forgiveness. You need to bring spirituality into, you, into yourself so that you, you let go of things. You, you feel thankful and you need to forgive people. Uh, and then you need to let go of all these things to be de-stressed so that you can slow down to sleep. Water and computer and your cell phone needs to stop around two hours before you go to sleep. I know it's computer's hard. I know my phone's hard too, but that's the, that's the idea. You need to slow everything down. That blue light that's coming out from your computer and your, your, your phones are, are really bad. It keeps you awake at night. So it's very important to kind of dim it down, slow it down towards your sleep cycle. Now, bedtime rituals, I do a lot of bedtime rituals, but your lights have to be dimmed down, your temperature has to be cool, 60 to 69 degrees, and then sound has to be quiet, or you have a white noise or pink noise, we call it. You have some kind of noise that are consistently going on, which is okay. And then breathing, you need to slow down the breathing, you have to focus on the breathing to make sure that you're able to sleep better. We're about halfway through my top six holistic treatments for healing diabetic foot ulcers. If you've enjoyed this video so far or learned something new, leave the words holistic rocks in the comments below and be sure to give it thumbs up. So let's talk about stress. Stress is a huge problem. If you have a lot of stress, guess what? You cannot, you cannot sleep. I don't care how tired you are. You have mentally awake because of you're angry about something, you're, you're thinking about something too much, then you can't sleep, right? So you need to decrease stress if you want to get really deep sleep. 85% of people have some kind of stress every day. And 70, almost 90% of the visit, uh, your doctor visits are about stress. Well, stress causes other problems, so it, it seems like stress is not the cause, but all these other problems coming from stress. What's causing physical stress? Eating a lot of junk food, you're, 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 you're not taking care of yourself, and you're not exercising enough. So you're not doing all the things that your body really needs to stay healthy, so it's caused physical stress. Emotional stress is a relationship thing. Your, your family stress, your, your work stress, you know, people stress each other, right? And that's the relationship. Spiritual, you're not connected to the, the power that needs to be connected with you, that gives you more power to be able to handle things that you cannot handle as a human, like forgiveness, so hard to do, right? And then joy and peace, really hard to do. So you need to get connected with your spirit. And then the results, what happens if you're stressed all the time? It produces adrenaline. You're like constantly like doing stuff, right? And then cortisol, it, it comes out from your body when you're stressed. Guess what? These are fat storing hormones. So you become fat. And then catecholamine is, is a hormone that comes out when you're stressed that it turns off your light in the front part of your brain that's doing logical thinking and, and your intelligence, all of that. So you become dumb that way. So you cannot think straight, right? When you're stressed out, you cannot think clearly because you're, it turns off your, your light in the front part of your brain that needs to be working when you, when, when you make decisions and you have to do things. How do we do stress? Well, there are many different strategies. There are hundreds, literally. I, I picked a few. No multitasking. Now, multitasking, the, the way people describe, I'm doing so many things all at once. Well, you're always doing one thing at a time. You have a lot of different projects that you can manage better, but multitasking you should not be doing. You do one task at a time the best way you can so that it's not all stacked up with each other. You're managing all the tasks we call multitasking. Change perception, very important. All the stress that comes to you, you have to change, ask different questions. What do I learn from this? Why did this happen? There's always a reason. You always, how many of you found out that you had a really stressful event that happened, but later on you find, found out that it was blessing in the skies, right? I, I see it all the time. So I've been through enough of those stress that I say, well, maybe there's something that I don't know right now. Maybe it's good for me. Maybe it's better for me in the, in the later times, right? So I kind of reframe, we call them reframing or changing your perception. Obviously sleeping more is a big, a big thing. Vacating. You need to vacate yourself. You need to have like, um, like a TV fast. Don't watch TV. Computer fast. You need to have a news fast. Well, I don't watch news because I've been doing that for years. Most of the patients come see me and they tell me what's going on anyway, so I don't need to watch all of that. So I need to fast some of those things. You need to go away on your vacation. You don't have to go far. 
walk, walk, walk on the park, take your dog out. You know, so you need to vacate yourself from where you are, what you're doing, recreating it. You need to do what you love and enjoy doing. I just picked up golf uh, a few months ago. I'm not good at it, obviously, but I really enjoy getting out there. Well, I don't have time that much, but whenever I have time, I go. It's a good family time, and it's really a great way to uh, do a, uh, a recreate yourself, a recreation, we call it. Relay. Hang out with help, happy people. Limit the people that you're not happy with. Limit their exposure to them and stay with more happy people. Contact them, talk to them, call old, old friends that are really, really you know, happy people to give you more happiness in your life. And then setting goals. For me, it's all about setting goals. My, my personal goals, professional goals, relational goals. I constantly review it all the time. I have a daily you know, uh, 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 setting goals in the evening time, my, my weekly setting goals on Sunday, and then, and then uh, monthly setting goals on the last weekend of the month. The setting goals to really see the big picture of what's going on and be able to be more in tune with what's happening so you're not surprised all the time, which is a big stress for you as well. Now, the most important spiritual level of doing all of this, it's a lot bigger than your relationship is very important, obviously, but spiritual aspect, it, it trumps all of it. Why? If you can have all of this, all your good eating, all your good relationship, really, you can overcome with this. What is it? Your love, joy, peace, and forgiveness. There are other spiritual qualities as well, but I just came up with the four right now. Heart exercise. I'm going to show you on the, on the next videos. Uh, how to do the heart exercise. Every night I close my eyes, breathe through my heart, and then sending out love to somebody easy for me to love, like my wife or my son. I, I do that and guess what? Your heart becomes more in tune, more relaxed, and your heart becomes even stronger. We call them heart exercise. So send out, send out love and joy and peace. Now pray and meditation, breathing. I don't have to explain that to you. Spend more time with your creator or whatever your belief system is, because that would give you more peace and most importantly, gives you ability to forgive. Forgiving is the most difficult thing you can do, especially when they offended you in a certain way, especially the close ones, your families. And it's very difficult, but you need to really focus on forgiving. Without forgiving, you will not be healthier. You will not be able to control your diabetes. You'll be stressed out all the time because it's really, at the end of the day, it's you have to forgive because the other person doesn't even know uh, that you are upset with them. So they don't even know. So unless you forgive and let go, guess what? Nobody else knows. So you really have to work on it yourself. And most importantly, you need to commit. You need to be able to visualize so you write it down. Affirmation, you say it so that you believe it and then celebrate because you own it now. You can do it. Things like, I can, I have to do this. This is really good for me. Look at the whole picture. When you overcome your diabetes, what happens? You benefit, your family benefits, all the people, your coworkers benefit because you're, you're more in tune with everything. You're healthier, you're more energetic, you'll be able to help more people. There are a lot of things you can do to really overcome your issues. Most importantly, you need to commit to improve your diabetes condition so that it will improve your diabetic ulcers. Be sure to like this video if you found it interesting or learned something new. If you think someone else will enjoy it, be sure to send it to them. Stay tuned for my next video in my Diabetic Also series coming out next Sunday, my personal daily rituals. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels such as Instagram and Facebook to stay updated on everything happening on my channel. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.